Hey guys, today we've got something special for you. We're going back to the arcades and the Atari era. So let's get straight into it with a look at Crystal Castles. Produced in 1983, the same year that Sega released their isometric action puzzler Congo Bongo, Crystal Castles is an arcade action puzzler collectathon, which makes me think isometric was the word of the year for arcade games in 1983. It certainly became popular in home computers, let's put it like that. The arcade game was controlled with a trackball, which I'm not convinced is the best way for this kind of game to go, but that's what Atari went with. You use the trackball to control Bentley Bear, who is collecting diamonds from 37 different castles while avoiding monsters along the way. It sounds like a standard simple arcade game, doesn't it? But that's where you're wrong, because this strange little game holds a few twists up its sleeve. Atari were always innovating, that's how they stayed ahead in the public eye for so long, and with Crystal Castles, that's no exception. This game has some brilliant little twists inside it. First of all, the layout of the first castle is not set by the game designer. Instead, there are multiple forms that the first castle can take, and the form that you play is determined by an algorithm fed by the initials of the person who set the highest score. The initials can only be three letters long, so the number of permutations that determine the shape that the castle can take are somewhat limited, compared to modern procedurally generated games, but even so, changing the layout based on the high score holder is a brilliant way of ensuring that the game stays fresh and interesting for players. So well done Atari, because you have to remember, the average player wouldn't see more than the first castle. So it's quite an interesting trick. But how many permutations can there be for this first castle? Let's find out. Well, the high score table has space for three symbols per score, and since we're talking about initials here, there has to be the option of having those same symbols in multiple spaces, so that's a significant pool of potential already. The available symbols include all 27 letters of the alphabet, plus a blank space which gives us 28 symbols already, but the symbol pool also includes a question mark, a semicolon, a colon, a space invader, yes really, a forward slash, and an end symbol to stop inputting more symbols. I think we can leave out the end symbol because that's likely just a carriage return, so people with no middle name can signal that they've finished entering their initials. But that gives us an extra five symbols on top of the 28 we already had for a total of 33. So we have 33 different possibilities in slot one of the high score line, and since it's possible to have two or three of the same letter as your initials, that means we also have 33 different possibilities in slot 2, and then 33 different possibilities in slot 3. Each slot is independent of all the others, because people can have the same letter in each space in their initials, and therefore we have to multiply these possibilities together. That means we have 33 times 33 times 33, or 33 cubed for short, and that's the number of permutations, which makes a total of 35,937 different layouts for this first castle, and which layout you play depends on what the high score holder put as their initials. So, if you take the high score spot, the next player won't play the same game as you when they try to beat that score. This is amazing, especially for 1983, when arcade games were still very much in their infancy. Crystal Castles is also one of the earliest arcade games designed to actually be beaten. There are nine castles in the game, each with four zones, which gives you a total of 36 levels to complete, and when you've completed all 36 levels, you're faced with one final level in a single zone 10th castle. Beat that zone, and you beat the game. That was quite an innovation in 1983, when, let's face it, this was an era where arcade games just kept going. They were designed to either loop around once you reach the final level, or just continue endlessly. Crystal Castles also contains some of the earliest examples of warp zones in arcade games, although I have to admit, if you're thinking of warp zones like in Super Mario, you're on the wrong track. These are more like the tunnels that are in Pac-Man, and we'll come back to the Pac-Man theme. So with all those innovations, how does the game actually play? Really well. I don't recommend using a trackball for the arcade version, although sometimes I can kind of see why Atari went down that route, now I've played it a few times. The action is frantic. The monsters know exactly where in the zone you are, and they will make a beeline for you if there's nothing in their way. 
So there's a definite Pac-Man theme going on to this game once you get started. The monsters chase you, you're picking up all of these diamonds, and the only thing is, the mace is isometric, but this is very definitely a Pac-Man clone. But that's not a bad thing, because Crystal Castles brings a lot of ideas and charm to the Pac-Man genre. Graphically, it's interesting. It's definitely colourful, and the gameplay is split over multiple levels, which works really well. I played this on the PlayStation 2 through the Atari Anthology Collection, and I'd highly recommend picking up a copy of that collection, if you ever get the chance, because there are some absolute gems on there. If you do pick it up, give playing with the thumbsticks as a controller a try at first, but then switch to the D-pad, and you'll see just how much the controls improve. Because on some sections of the game, there are multiple points that you can stand on a single row, which is useful if you want to try to slip by a monster, although they will probably still catch you if you do. But it's not useful if you want to try and collect a diamond, as they will only be on one of those points in each row. That's why I found the D-pad the best way to control the game, because you don't accidentally go up and down on that level. But the arcade wasn't the only place that you could play Crystal Castles. Atari also released a version on the Atari 2600 console. So let's give that version a look and see how well the game ported to the home versions. Again, we'll be playing this on the PlayStation 2 via the Atari Anthology, because that version of the game is also on the disc. First of all, let's look at the positives. Everything's here. It may be graphically downgraded, but it's all here. The levels? Well, most of them. There are now only eight castles instead of nine, but that's still a lot of castles. The music's here, and it sounds just as great. It's all come from the Nutcracker, and it's actually rendered very well on the Atari Beeper. The charm of the game has ported over very nicely. Bentley Bear looks wonderful. He's really got some charm to him. This feels like Crystal Castles, not a poor home console clone. It's great. But there is a downside, and it's a massive downside. The controls suck. I really do mean that. Whether you play this using a joystick, using a keyboard via an emulator, or on the D-pad in the Atari Anthology, you will be fighting the game every step of the way. The reason is simple. The diamonds, which are now lined on the screen, are on one of three rows per square of the zone, and Bentley Bear will inevitably not be on that row when he passes by the diamonds. The plus side is that the enemy AI has been downgraded to compensate for this, which makes it much easier to trap enemies behind barriers so that you can run and grab diamonds in peace. But nevertheless, the game does become very frustrating because Bentley Bear moves at breakneck speed, so you'll be constantly misjudging where the next diamond is as you rush around trying to avoid the enemies. The reason for this appears to be that the diamonds are arranged in vertical rows on the screen, but the game is not designed for that. The game is isometric, it's at an angle compared to the diamonds, so in your head you're trying to work out where on the space you are and you'll never get it right. It's a big design flaw in my opinion. But if you can get past this annoyance, the game is still really good fun, just as it was in the arcades. I do mean it when I said that there's still all the charm of the original in here, because there really is. It's a great game, but with a big control problem. And if you can get past that, I think there's still enough here for you to be able to enjoy a decent gaming session. But if you do have the choice, I'd recommend you play the arcade version any day of the week. It is just a better experience. And there you go, Crystal Castles is one of those games that a lot of people might overlook. It's kind of a Pac-Man clone and kind of not. It's got its own charm to it, and I really do think if you give it a try, there's something there that you'll probably like, especially if you like Pac-Man, but want a kind of twist on it. Anyway, that's really all we've got time for today, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you did like this, and if you did, remember to click that like button, share it with your friends so that they'll know a good game when they see it, because this really is a good game. And do subscribe for future videos, because there will be more in the future. But until next time, I've been Zoe Kirk Robinson, you've been watching Game Hammer Daily, and I'll see you tomorrow.